John, your update on what's happening in the uranium market and your last results was phenomenal. How about we start there? Can you tell us what's happening with uranium? Yeah, you know, it's a very exciting time in the space. Uh, a lot of geopolitics being uh, considered here. Uh, Russia is a major supplier, so is Ukraine. And so what's going on there in that part of the world is putting a lot of pressure on the space. So we're seeing a bifurcated market where uh, Western supplies are being valued more than global supplies. And we see that in our discussions with the utilities. They're willing to pay more now for Western supply than they are uh, for the global uh, supply, particularly out of Russia and uh, Ukraine or, or out of uh, Kazakhstan. They want that security and uh, they're after it and they're willing to pay for it now. So let's talk about geopolitics and let's start with the USA first. The Department of Energy has altered some legislation to make it even more beneficial for shareholders to be involved in uranium. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, you bet. So Congress, in a bipartisan manner, they established the uranium reserve and they uh, charged the Department of Energy to set up the program and go out and acquire and process $75 million worth of domestic uranium. And so the Department of Energy has initiated that process. They've got the program stood up and have gone out for bid. Uh, we've got a great inventory. We've bid a portion of that inventory into uh, the reserve. And we'll know by December 15th. Uh, DOE has had a couple of delays, but the new deadline is December 15th. So we'll know if we've prevailed on that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great way for us to take some of our inventories and to turn those into cash by selling them into the reserve. And uh, DOE will then use those pounds to backstop uh, utilities in case there is a supply disruption. And speaking of supply, of course, the financial market doesn't like to miss out. There were a number of ETFs that came trotting after the uranium market when yeah. we saw that uptick. Uh, can you give us an update about why we haven't seen ongoing and continued rising? I have people call me all the time, John, and I'm like, let's ask an expert and a yeah, global you know leader. What's, go yeah, what's no, I, going on? I wish on? it would continue to rise, but, but it hasn't. It seems like it is somewhat uh, found a, a new normal. Uh, spot and long-term hovering right around $50 a pound. Uh, but I, I guess I would convey that that may be a published price and that may be the price that some global players are seeing. Uh, but again, in our discussions with utilities and with Euro U.S. utilities and European utilities, uh, they really are feeling the impact of Russia and Ukraine and are very nervous about their future supply. So they are not paying that published price. It is a bifurcated market. And unfortunately, uh, the uh, Western price is not published. So I think uh, there, the uh, global price has reached a, a kind of a, a plateau, but other pricing, Western pricing has not. And uh, we've seen that in our contracting discussions. And uh, I think we're going to continue to see that. Right now, uh, Congress is contemplating cutting off the supply from Russia. If that happens, that's going to be an, a tremendous tremendous earthquake in our industry because both Russia and Kazakhstan are such big suppliers. So we're expecting to see in further increases because of geopolitics, but also because just of increased demand going forward. There, there's a big gap right now between supply and demand. And I just want to clarify for our audience, when you talk about it becoming a major earthquake, you don't mean negative for uranium shareholders right. of I North American positive. uranium companies. You mean positive. I Thank mean you. positive. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are so few uh, uranium producers globally that uh, when a major supply like that gets cut off, it'll have an immediate and overnight impact on pricing uh, for basic uranium primary supply, but also conversion and enrichment. So throughout the fuel cycle, it'll be a very positive for the suppliers in each of those arenas. One final question. Will you be able to ramp up if this potential earthquake actually occurs, which, you know, from all indicators, it will. Uh, can you handle the production demands on you? Yeah, so we've got two flagship properties, Lost Creek and Shirley Basin. Lost Creek is built out, it's actually producing right now. So for us to ramp that mine up, we can do it, get up to very meaningful production in less than six months. And we continue to shorten that timeline because we're drilling and constructing right now. 
Shirley Basin, our second property, it'll take us about 18 months to get it ramped up uh, to a very elevated uh, number uh, because we need to build out that facility. But the answer is yes, we can ramp up very quickly, especially at Lost Creek, and we're very well positioned. 